Hi everyone, Dr. Bishop here to give a short video on Understanding Articles Comparing Diagnostic Tests. In this video, we're going to lay out the framework for going through the three stages of appraising a research article comparing diagnostic tests. But before we start reading the article, I'd like to discuss the diagnostic process. Diagnosis is a determination of which disease or condition is causing a patient's signs or symptoms. The diagnostic process is complex and usually follows a series of steps. First, a patient presents with signs or symptoms. Then, the doctor makes a differential diagnosis of the most likely possibilities for those signs and symptoms. For one or more of those disease conditions, she will probably think the diagnosis is very likely, and so she may then order a diagnostic test. Finally, the doctor has to interpret the results of the test and act on those test results. We're going to focus on the quality of that diagnostic test and how it helps us make different decisions about whether a patient has a disease or condition. I'd like you to consider three things when, we're, when we think about articles about diagnosis. First, what is the probability that a patient has the disease? before you get the test. This is called the pretest probability. And it's important because if the pretest probability is very, very low, ordering the test may not change your decision about whether the patient has a disease or condition. Or if the pretest probability is really high, that may also not alter your decision based on the diagnostic test. The second question is, how good is that diagnostic test? And we're going to talk about test characteristics and how we interpret those test characteristics. Third, and based on those two previous items, the pretest probability and the test characteristics, we're going to determine a post-test probability. That's the likelihood that a patient has a disease or condition based on whether the test was positive or negative. Over the next few videos, we are going to focus on the second question. How good is the test at diagnosing a disease or condition? In later videos and in class, we will discuss applying these results and about the concepts of pretest probability and post-test probability. So if our question is, how good is a diagnostic test, we need to consider a different study design than the one that we used to assess the effect of therapy. The study design is not a randomized control trial, but instead is a trial that compares the diagnostic test of question versus what's called a gold standard. So to start out, researchers will identify a group of patients who have a suspected condition or disease. They will do the diagnostic test that they're studying first, and then they will compare those results to, the, to a gold standard. The gold standard is considered the test that is the best available to diagnose a condition. They will then look to see whether the condition was present for the gold standard test versus the new diagnostic test, or whether it was absent for the gold standard test versus the new diagnostic test. So let's look at a clinical scenario to help you understand this. You are a primary care physician who is seeing a patient who is having chest pain. It sounds like typical angina or cardiac chest pain. He has a heavy feeling on his chest when he exerts himself. He also has risk factors for coronary artery disease or heart disease that make him at high risk for having this disease. He has hypertension or high blood pressure, and he is a smoker. He also had an abnormal stress test, which is a non-invasive test for a diagnosis of coronary artery disease. Your plan is to send him to a cardiologist for an angiogram, which is a more invasive test for coronary artery disease and considered the gold standard. As you discuss these options with him, he says, Doctor, I have a friend who just had a CAT scan with his doctor, and he said the results were just as good as an angiogram and didn't have the same risks. Do you think I should have that test done instead? You advise him that you'd like to do a little more research on coronary CAT scans, and you'll get back to him with advice. Before you search the literature, 
you develop the following PICO question. In patients with a high likelihood of coronary artery disease, is multi-detector computed tomography or multi-detector CT versus angiogram effective at diagnosing coronary artery disease? Using this PICO question, you use the TRIP database to find an article published in the Journal of the American Medical Association that you think will answer this question. Like almost every research article, it follows the same format that we discussed in the anatomy of a research article video. A copy of the article is in Canvas. Feel free to read it now or refer back to it as we go through this video and the next few videos. And like every research article, we're going to go through the three steps of critical appraisal. First, are the results of the study valid? Second, what are the results? And third, how can I apply the results to patient care? In the next video, we're going to focus on the first step. Are the results of the study valid?